Are cells in the nervous system replaced during an individual's lifetime? Neurons have a very limited capacity for regeneration. In general, they neither replicate themselves nor repair themselves. Axons and dendrites in the peripheral nervous system may undergo repair. If the cell body is intact and if the Schwann cells are functional. In the central nervous system, however, a damaged or cut axon is usually not repaired even when the cell body is intact and undamaged. Scientists have discovered recently that there are a few small concentrations of neuronal stem cells that remain in adults that can produce a limited number of new neurons. What is a muscle spasm? A muscle spasm is a sudden, strong, and painful involuntary contraction. When a muscle is in spasm it feels tight and is described as being in a knot. Muscle spasms occur more frequently in muscles that are overworked or injured. Rest and time resolve most muscle spasms. A charley horse is a common name for a muscle spasm in the leg. What is fibrosis? Fibrosis is a process in which increasing amounts of fibrous connective tissue develop in skeletal muscle. This makes the muscle less flexible and the collagen fibers can restrict movement and circulation. What is an e-corsh? An e-corsh is a flayed figure, a three-dimensional representation of the human body. Usually made of plaster, with the envelope of skin and fat removed. Its intent is to depict the surface muscles with precise anatomical correctness. Who discovered how muscles work? Hugh Huxley, 1924, and Andrew Huxley, 1917, the scientists were unrelated, researched theories regarding muscle contraction. Hugh Huxley was initially a nuclear physicist who entered the field of biology at the end of World War II. He used both X-ray diffraction and electron microscopy to study muscle contraction. Andrew Huxley was a muscle biochemist who obtained data similar to Hughes. Indicating that the contractile proteins thought to be present in muscles are not contractile at all. But rather slide past each other to shorten a muscle. This theory is called the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction. What is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS? Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, also called Lou Gehrig's disease after the New York Yankee baseball. 
player who retired from baseball in 1939 after being diagnosed with ALS. Is a fatal neurological disease that attacks the nerve cells, motor neurons, responsible for controlling voluntary muscles. Motor neurons serve as controlling units and vital communication. Links between the nervous system and the voluntary muscles of the body. Messages from motor neurons in the brain, upper motor neurons, are transmitted to motor. Neurons in the spinal cord, lower motor neurons, 106 and from them to particular muscles. In individuals with ALS both the upper and lower motor. Neurons degenerate or die and cease to send messages to muscles. Eventually, all muscles under voluntary control are affected and patients lose. The strength and ability to move their arms, legs, and other body functions. In the end, even the ability to breathe is affected. The disease does not impair a person's mind, personality, intelligence, or memory. How do neurons transmit information to other neurons? Most neurons communicate with other neurons or muscle by releasing chemicals called neurotransmitters. These transmitters influence receptors on other neurons. In a few specialized places, neurons communicate directly with other neurons via pores called gap junctions. How quickly does muscle strength increase? Some muscles gain strength faster than others. In general, large muscles, such as those present in the chest and back, grow faster than smaller ones, including those in the arms and shoulders. Most people can increase their strength between 7 and 40 percent. After 10 weeks of training each muscle group at least twice a week. Do humans have dark and white muscles similar to those of a chicken? A chicken has white wing meat and dark leg meat. And humans are much the same in having dark leg muscles and white arm muscles. These differences in color are due to the use of and demands on the limbs. Dark muscle is specialized for endurance and its color. Comes from a rich blood supply and high myoglobin content. Endurance in dark muscle is at the expense of speed. Your legs can carry you all day, but they cannot move with the speed of a magician's hand. White muscle specializes in very fast contractions and movements. Such as wildly clapping hands or swinging a tennis racket. White muscle tires quickly because it is less well supplied with blood. What are the functions of the nervous system? The nervous system is one of the major regulatory systems of the body maintaining homeostasis. 
Its functions are to, 1, monitor the body's internal and external environments, 2, integrate sensory information, and 3, direct or coordinate the responses of other organ systems to the sensory input. What is writer's cramp? Writer's cramp is actually a localized muscle spasm called focal dystonia. It is caused by holding a pen or pencil too long, especially too tightly, and occurs only during handwriting. Relaxing the hand periodically, exercising the hand, holding the pen more loosely. And taking frequent breaks from writing usually solves the problem. How do leak channels differ from voltage gated channels? Leak channels, also called passive channels, are always open, allowing the passage of sodium ions, Na+, and potassium ions, K+, across the membrane to maintain the resting membrane potential of minus 70 millivolts. Voltage-gated ion channels open and close in response to specific changes in the membrane potential. They may be chemically regulated, voltage regulated, or mechanically regulated. Most gated channels are closed at the resting potential. How do leak channels differ from voltage gated channels? Leak channels, also called passive channels, are always open, allowing the passage of sodium ions, Na+, and potassium ions, K+, across the membrane to maintain the resting membrane potential of minus 70 millivolts. Voltage-gated ion channels open and close in response to specific changes in the membrane potential. They may be chemically regulated, voltage regulated, or mechanically regulated. Most gated channels are closed at the resting potential. What is a resting membrane potential? All cells, including neurons, have resting membrane potentials. The ionic environment inside a cell differs from the ionic environment outside the cell. This difference is maintained by special ion pumps that are embedded in the cell membrane. Because the ions have a charge, cations are positively charged and anions are negatively charged. This difference in ionic content sets up an electrical potential difference between the interior and the exterior of the cell. Excitable cells, example. Neurons, cardiac muscle cells. And striated muscle cells, also have other ion channels across the cell membrane that can be activated, or gated, by different conditions. For a neuron, this potential difference produced by the ion pumps when the cell is at rest is called the resting membrane potential. The resting membrane potential of an average neuron is 
approximately minus 70 millivolts with respect to the exterior of the cell. This means that the electrical charge on the inside of the plasma membrane measures 0.07 volts less than that on the outside of the plasma membrane. What is a resting membrane potential? All cells, including neurons, have resting membrane potentials. The ionic environment inside a cell differs from the ionic environment outside the cell. This difference is maintained by special ion pumps that are embedded in the cell membrane. Because the ions have a charge, cations are positively charged and anions are negatively charged. This difference in ionic content sets up an electrical potential difference between the interior and the exterior of the cell. Excitable cells, example. Neurons cardiac muscle cells and striated muscle cells also have other ion channels across the cell membrane that can be activated or gated by different conditions for a neuron this potential difference produced by the ion pumps when the cell is at rest is called the resting membrane potential the resting membrane potential of an average neuron is approximately minus 70 millivolts with respect to the exterior of the cell. This means that the electrical charge on the inside of the plasma membrane measures 0.07 volts less than that on the outside of the plasma membrane. What is an action potential? An action potential is a series of rapidly occurring events that locally decrease and reverse the membrane potential and then eventually restore it to the resting state. The two phases of an action potential are the depolarizing phase and the repolarizing phase. During the depolarizing phase, the inside of the neuron becomes more positive than the outside, reaching 30 millivolts. During the repolarizing phase, the membrane polarization is restored to its resting state of minus 70 millivolts. The depolarizing and repolarizing phases of an action potential last approximately 1 millisecond. The production of the action potential by the opening of a special ion channel in the cell membrane was first described by Alan Lloyd Hodgkin, 1914-1998, and Andrew Fielding Huxley, 1917, in the 1940s. They shared the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1963, along with Sir John Ecclesiastes, 1903-1997, for their discoveries concerning the ionic mechanisms of the action potential and the excitation and inhibition of the nerve cell membrane. What is an action potential? An action potential is a series of rapidly occurring events that locally decrease and reverse the membrane potential and then eventually restore it to the resting state. 
The two phases of an action potential are the depolarizing phase and the repolarizing phase. During the depolarizing phase, the inside of the neuron becomes more positive than the outside, reaching 30 millivolts. During the repolarizing phase, the membrane polarization is restored to its resting state of minus 70 millivolts. The depolarizing and repolarizing phases of an action potential last approximately 1 millisecond. The production of the action potential by the opening of a special ion channel in the cell membrane was first described by Alan Lloyd Hodgkin, 1914 to 1998, and Andrew Fielding Huxley, 1917, in the 1940s. They shared the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1963, along with Sir John Ecclesiastes, 1903-1997, for their discoveries concerning the ionic mechanisms of the action potential and the excitation and inhibition of the nerve cell membrane. What is a synapse? A synapse is the location of intercellular communication. Every synapse has components associated with two cells, the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron. The presynaptic neuron is the cell that sends the message. While the postsynaptic neuron is the cell that receives the message. What is a synapse? A synapse is the location of intercellular communication. Every synapse has components associated with two cells, the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron. The presynaptic neuron is the cell that sends the message. While the postsynaptic neuron is the cell that receives the message. When is a nerve impulse generated? A nerve cell receives many synapses from other neurons, and sometimes from itself. Each time one of these axons conducts an action potential, the presynaptic terminal releases neurotransmitters that can open chemically gated ion channels on the postsynaptic neuron, the neuron that receives the terminal. The opening of the ion channels produce local, graded changes in the resting potential of the neuron. If it depolarizes the cell, reduces the potential difference between the inside and outside of the neuron. The small change is called an excitatory postsynaptic potential, or EPSP. If it hyperpolarizes the cell, makes the cell's internal potential more negative with respect its exterior. Then it is called an inhibitory postsynaptic potential, or IPSP. All of the EPSPs and IPSPs add to change the membrane potential. A nerve impulse is generated when the membrane potential reaches a critical threshold. This threshold is typically about minus 55 millivolts. If the neuron does not reach this critical threshold it does not fire an action potential.
when is a nerve impulse generated? A nerve cell receives many synapses from other neurons, and sometimes from itself. Each time one of these axons conducts an action potential. The presynaptic terminal releases neurotransmitters that can open chemically gated ion. Channels on the postsynaptic neuron, the neuron that receives the terminal. The opening of the ion channels produce local, graded changes in the resting potential of the neuron. If it depolarizes the cell, reduces the potential difference between the inside and outside of the neuron. The small change is called an excitatory postsynaptic potential, or EPSP. If it hyperpolarizes the cell, makes the cell's internal potential more negative with respect its exterior. Then it is called an inhibitory postsynaptic potential, or IPSP. All of the EPSPs and IPSPs add to change the membrane potential. A nerve impulse is generated when the membrane potential reaches a critical threshold. This threshold is typically about minus 55 millivolts. If the neuron does not reach this critical threshold it does not fire an action potential. How quickly do nerve impulses travel? Nerve impulses travel at an average of 160 feet slash second, 50 meters slash second. The slowest nerve impulses travel at 2.5 feet slash second. 0.7 meters slash second, in small unmyelinated, uninsulated, fibers. Nerve impulses in large myelinated, insulated, fibers can Travel at 395 feet slash second, 120 meters slash second, or faster. How quickly do nerve impulses travel? Nerve impulses travel at an average of 160 feet slash second, 50 meters slash second. The slowest nerve impulses travel at 2.5 feet slash second. 0.7 meters slash second, in small unmyelinated, uninsulated, fibers. Nerve impulses in large myelinated, insulated, fibers can Travel at 395 feet slash second, 120 meters slash second, or faster. Are all action potentials the same size? Each action potential of a nerve cell is the same for that cell. For this reason, an action potential is called an all or none response. Are all action potentials the same size? Each action potential of a nerve cell is the same for that cell. For this reason, an action potential is called an all or none response.
What are some major neurotransmitters? Scientists have identified at least 50 neurotransmitters in the nervous system. And there may be several dozen more. There are four groups of neurotransmitters, 1. Acetylcholine 2. Amino acids, 3. Monoamines, and 4. Neuropeptides Acetylcholine perhaps one of the best-known neurotransmitters is the most important neurotransmitter between motor neurons and voluntary muscle contraction it has an inhibitory effect on heart muscle and excitatory effect on smooth muscles through the effects on different types of acetylcholine receptors Amino acid neurotransmitters include glutamate and aspirate. These neurotransmitters are some of the most potent excitatory neurotransmitters in the central nervous system. They are found in the brain. There are two important groups of monoamines, catecholamines and indolimines. Catecholamines include norepinephrine and dopamine. Serotonin, believed to be involved in sleep, mood, appetite, and pain, is an indolimine. Neuropeptides include somatostatin, endorphins, and enkephalins. Somatostatin is a growth hormone inhibiting hormone. Endorphins and enkephalins suppress synaptic activity leading to pain sensation. What are some major neurotransmitters? Scientists have identified at least 50 neurotransmitters in the nervous system. And there may be several dozen more. There are four groups of neurotransmitters, 1. Acetylcholine 2. Amino acids, 3. Monoamines, and 4. Neuropeptides Acetylcholine perhaps one of the best-known neurotransmitters is the most important neurotransmitter between motor neurons and voluntary muscle contraction it has an inhibitory effect on heart muscle and excitatory effect on smooth muscles through the effects on different types of acetylcholine receptors Amino acid neurotransmitters include glutamate and aspirate. These neurotransmitters are some of the most potent excitatory neurotransmitters in the central nervous system. They are found in the brain. There are two important groups of monoamines, catecholamines and indolimines. Catecholamines include norepinephrine and dopamine. Serotonin, believed to be involved in sleep, mood, appetite, and pain, is an indolimine. Neuropeptides include somatostatin, endorphins, and enkephalins. Somatostatin is a growth hormone inhibiting hormone. Endorphins and enkephalins suppress synaptic activity leading to pain sensation. How do excitatory neurotransmitters differ from inhibitory neurotransmitters?
Neurotransmitters are classified as excitatory or inhibitory. According to their effects on postsynaptic membranes. A neurotransmitter is called excitatory if activation of the receptor causes. Depolarization of the membrane and promotes action potential generation. A neurotransmitter is called inhibitory if the activation of the receptor causes hyperpolarization and depresses action potential generation. How do excitatory neurotransmitters differ from inhibitory neurotransmitters? Neurotransmitters are classified as excitatory or inhibitory. According to their effects on postsynaptic membranes. A neurotransmitter is called excitatory if activation of the receptor causes. Depolarization of the membrane and promotes action potential generation. A neurotransmitter is called inhibitory if the activation of the receptor causes hyperpolarization and depresses action potential generation. What are some drugs and toxins which affect acetylcholine ACH, activity at synapses? The chart below explains the various drugs and toxins and their effects on acetylcholine ACH, activity. What are some drugs and toxins which affect acetylcholine ACH, activity at synapses? The chart below explains the various drugs and toxins and their effects on acetylcholine ACH, activity. How do local anesthetics block the sensation of pain? Local anesthetics, such as novocaine and lidocaine, reduce the permeability of the membrane to sodium. Nerve impulses cannot pass through the membrane, and so the stimulation of sensory neurons is prevented. Pain signals do not reach the central nervous system. How do local anesthetics block the sensation of pain? Local anesthetics, such as novocaine and lidocaine, reduce the permeability of the membrane to sodium. Nerve impulses cannot pass through the membrane, and so the stimulation of sensory neurons is prevented. Pain signals do not reach the central nervous system. What is epilepsy? Epilepsy is a brain disorder in which clusters of neurons in the brain sometimes signal abnormally. During an epileptic seizure, neurons may fire as many as 500 times a second. Much faster than the normal rate of about 80 times a second. 
when the normal pattern of neuronal activity becomes disturbed, strange sensations. Emotions and behavior, convulsions, muscle spasms, and loss of consciousness may be experienced. What is epilepsy? Epilepsy is a brain disorder in which clusters of neurons in the brain sometimes signal abnormally. During an epileptic seizure, neurons may fire as many as 500 times a second. Much faster than the normal rate of about 80 times a second. When the normal pattern of neuronal activity becomes disturbed, strange sensations. Emotions and behavior, convulsions, muscle spasms, and loss of consciousness may be experienced. How do muscle cells use calcium? Calcium ions are stored inside muscle cells. The calcium ions are released from storage when a muscle cell gets a signal to induce contraction. Which initiates the movement of the contractile proteins within muscles. When calcium concentrations fall, muscle contractions stop. What are some major neurotransmitters? Scientists have identified at least 50 neurotransmitters in the nervous system. And there may be several dozen more. There are four groups of neurotransmitters, 1. Acetylcholine. 2. Amino acids, 3. Monoamines, and 4. Neuropeptides. Acetylcholine, perhaps one of the best known neurotransmitters, is the most important neurotransmitter between motor neurons and voluntary muscle contraction. It has an inhibitory effect on heart muscle and excitatory effect on smooth muscles. Through the effects on different types of acetylcholine receptors. Amino acid neurotransmitters include glutamate and aspirate. These neurotransmitters are some of the most potent excitatory neurotransmitters in the central nervous system. They are found in the brain. There are two important groups of monoamines, catecholamines and indolimines. Catecholamines include norepinephrine and dopamine. Serotonin, believed to be involved in sleep, mood, appetite, and pain, is an indolimine. Neuropeptides include somatostatin, endorphins, and enkephalins. Somatostatin is a growth hormone inhibiting hormone. Endorphins and enkephalins suppress synaptic activity leading to pain sensation. What is a synapse? A synapse is the location of intercellular communication. Every synapse has components associated with two cells, the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron. The presynaptic neuron is the cell that sends the message. 
while the postsynaptic neuron is the cell that receives the message. Do all muscle cells work the same way? Although all muscles work by contracting, not all muscle types have sarcomeres, the muscle contraction units. Cardiac muscle cells have sarcomeres but use different support structures during contraction than those found in skeletal muscles. Smooth muscle cells do not use sarcomeres at all. How do local anesthetics block the sensation of pain? Local anesthetics, such as novocaine and lidocaine, reduce the permeability of the membrane to sodium. Nerve impulses cannot pass through the membrane, and so the stimulation of sensory neurons is prevented. Pain signals do not reach the central nervous system. What are some drugs and toxins which affect acetylcholine, ACH, activity at synapses? The chart below explains the various drugs and toxins and their effects on acetylcholine, ACH, activity. Are all action potentials the same size? Each action potential of a nerve cell is the same for that cell. For this reason, an action potential is called an all or none response. What is oxygen debt? During rest or moderate exercise, muscles receive enough oxygen to respire aerobically. During strenuous exercise, oxygen deficiency may cause lactic acid to accumulate. Oxygen debt is the amount of oxygen required to convert accumulated lactic acid to glucose and to restore supplies of ADP, adenosine triphosphate, and creatine phosphate. What sources do muscle cells use for energy? Muscle cells use a variety of energy sources to power their contractions. For quick energy, the cells utilize their stores of ADP, adenosine triphosphate, and creatine phosphate, which is another phosphate-containing compound. These stored molecules are usually depleted within the first 20 seconds of activity. The cells then switch to other sources, most notably glycogen. A carbohydrate that is made of glucose molecules strung together in long branching chains. Which are the fastest muscles in the body?
the extraocular muscles, which allow you to move your eye. And the laryngeal muscles associated with vocal folds are the fastest contracting muscles in the body. How many muscles are involved in chewing food? Four pairs of muscles are involved in chewing or mastication. These are some of the strongest muscles of the body. What energy sources are available for muscles to contract and relax? Muscle contraction requires significant amounts of energy. Like most cells, muscle cells use ATP, adenosine triphosphate, as the energy source. In the presence of calcium ions, myosin acts as an enzyme. Splitting ADP into ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and inorganic phosphate and releasing energy to do work. Muscle cells store only enough ADP for about 10 seconds worth of activity. Once this is used up, the cells must produce more ADP from other energy sources. Including creatine phosphate, glycogen, glucose, and fatty acids. What muscles are associated with the lips and the area surrounding the mouth? The orbicularis oris and buccinator, the kissing muscles, pucker the mouth. The buccinator also flattens the cheeks, as when one whistles or blows a trumpet and is sometimes called the trumpeter's muscle. Smiling is accomplished primarily by the zygomaticus muscles. Sneering is accomplished by the levator labii superioris. And frowning or pouting is largely caused by the depressor anguli oris. What is the triangle of auscultation? The triangle of auscultation is a small area of the back where three muscles, trapezius, latissimus dorsi, and rhomboideus major, converge. This area is near the scapula and becomes enlarged when a person leans forward. With arms folded across the chest. When a physician places a stethoscope on the triangle of auscultation. The sounds of the respiratory organs can be clearly heard. What is the function of the corrugator muscle? Located on the forehead. The corrugator is the muscle that contracts the forehead into wrinkles and pulls the eyebrows together. What is the action of botulinum toxin? The bacterium Clostridium botulinum produces a poison called botulinum toxin. 
that can prevent the release of acetylcholine from motor neuron axons at neuromuscular junctions. Causing botulism, a very serious form of food poisoning. This condition is most likely the result of eating home processed food that has not been heated enough to kill the bacteria in it or to deactivate the toxin. The endospores of this bacterium are very heat resistant and can withstand several hours of boiling at 212 degrees Fahrenheit 100 degrees Celsius and 10 minutes at 248 degrees Fahrenheit 120 degrees Celsius. Botulinum toxin blocks stimulation of muscle fibers. Paralyzing muscles, including those responsible for breathing. Without prompt medical treatment, the fatality rate for botulism is very high. What is myasthenia gravis? Myasthenia gravis, which usually begins in the face, is a muscular weakness not accompanied by atrophy. It is a chronic, progressive autoimmune disease resulting from the destruction of acetylcholine receptors in the neuromuscular junction. Abnormal antibodies that bind to and destroy acetylcholine. Receptors can be identified in many people who have myasthenia gravis. Because of the decrease in the number of acetylcholine receptors, the efficiency of neuronal stimulation of muscle 100 fibers decreases, and the muscle is weaker as a result. How many muscles are in the human ear? There are six muscles in the human ear. Are pulled muscles a result of muscle fatigue? Muscle soreness that develops approximately 24 hours after. Exercise is the result of microtrauma to the muscle fibers. Pulled muscles, frequently called torn muscles. Result from stretching a muscle too far, causing some of the fibers to tear apart. Internal bleeding, swelling, and pain often accompany a pulled muscle. How quickly do nerve impulses travel? Nerve impulses travel at an average of 160 feet slash second, 50 meters slash second. The slowest nerve impulses travel at 2.5 feet slash second. 0.7 meters slash second, in small unmyelinated, uninsulated, fibers. Nerve impulses in large myelinated, insulated, fibers can travel at 395 feet slash second, 120 meters slash second, or faster. What muscles act on the skin around the eyes and eyebrows?
the occipitofrontalis raises the eyebrows and the orbicularis oculi closes the eyelids and causes crow's feet wrinkles in the skin at the lateral corners of the eyes. What are the hamstring muscles? There are three hamstring muscles, which are located at the back of the thigh. They flex the leg on the thigh, such as when one kneels. They also extend the hip whenever one, for example, sits in a chair. Hamstring injuries are probably the most common muscle injury among runners. Maintaining flexibility and strengthening the muscle helps to prevent injury. Hamstring muscles are also prone to range injury. How many muscles does it take to produce a smile and a frown? Seventeen muscles are used in smiling while the average frown uses forty-three muscles. What is the all or none response in muscle cells? According to the all or none response, Muscle cells are completely under the control of their motor neuron. Muscle cells never contract on their own. A skeletal muscle does not contract partially. If it contracts, it contracts fully. What is epilepsy? Epilepsy is a brain disorder in which clusters of neurons in the brain sometimes signal abnormally. During an epileptic seizure, neurons may fire as many as 500 times a second much faster than the normal rate of about 80 times a second. When the normal pattern of neuronal activity becomes disturbed, strange sensations, emotions and behavior, convulsions, muscle spasms, and loss of consciousness may be experienced. When is a nerve impulse generated? A nerve cell receives many synapses from other neurons, and sometimes from itself. Each time one of these axons conducts an action potential. The presynaptic terminal releases neurotransmitters that can open chemically gated ion channels on the postsynaptic neuron, the neuron that receives the terminal. The opening of the ion channels produce local, graded changes in the resting potential of the neuron. If it depolarizes the cell, reduces the potential difference between the inside and outside of the neuron. The small change is called an excitatory postsynaptic potential, or EPSP. If it hyperpolarizes the cell, makes the cell's internal potential more negative with respect its exterior, then it is called an inhibitory postsynaptic potential, or IPSP. 
all of the EPSPs and IPSPs add to change the membrane potential. A nerve impulse is generated when the membrane potential reaches a critical threshold. This threshold is typically about minus 55 millivolts. If the neuron does not reach this critical threshold it does not fire an action potential. What is the longest muscle in the human body? The longest muscle is the sartorius, which runs from the waist to the knee. Its purpose is to flex the hip and knee. What is a resting membrane potential? All cells, including neurons, have resting membrane potentials. The ionic environment inside a cell differs from the ionic environment outside the cell. This difference is maintained by special ion pumps that are embedded in the cell membrane. Because the ions have a charge, cations are positively charged and anions are negatively charged. This difference in ionic content sets up an electrical potential difference between the interior and the exterior of the cell. Excitable cells, example. Neurons cardiac muscle cells and striated muscle cells also have other ion channels across the cell membrane that can be activated or gated by different conditions for a neuron this potential difference produced by the ion pumps when the cell is at rest is called the resting membrane potential the resting membrane potential of an average neuron is approximately minus 70 millivolts with respect to the exterior of the cell. This means that the electrical charge on the inside of the plasma membrane measures 0.07 volts less than that on the outside of the plasma membrane. How are muscles named? Most muscles have names that are descriptive. Muscles are named according to their location, origin, and insertion, direction of muscle fibers. Size, shape, type of action produced, or other criteria, such as nearby bones. What is an action potential? An action potential is a series of rapidly occurring events that locally decrease and reverse the membrane potential and then eventually restore it to the resting state. The two phases of an action potential are the depolarizing phase and the repolarizing phase. During the depolarizing phase, the inside of the neuron becomes more positive than the outside, reaching 30 millivolts. During the repolarizing phase, the membrane polarization is restored to its resting state of minus 70 millivolts. The depolarizing and repolarizing phases of an action potential last approximately 1 millisecond.
the production of the action potential by the opening of a special ion channel in the cell membrane was first described by Alan Lloyd Hodgkin, 1914-1998, and Andrew Fielding Huxley, 1917, in the 1940s. They shared the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1963, along with Sir John Ecclesiastes, 1903-1997. For their discoveries concerning the ionic mechanisms of the action potential and the excitation and inhibition of the nerve cell membrane. How do leak channels differ from voltage gated channels? Leak channels, also called passive channels, are always open, allowing the passage of sodium ions, Na+, and potassium ions, K+, across the membrane to maintain the resting membrane potential of minus 70 millivolts. Voltage-gated ion channels open and close in response to specific changes in the membrane potential. They may be chemically regulated, voltage regulated, or mechanically regulated. Most gated channels are closed at the resting potential. Does muscle regularly convert to fat when a person stops exercising? When a person stops exercising regularly, muscles begin to atrophy and fat cells may begin to expand. This process gives the appearance of muscle converting to fat. But the number of muscle cells remains the same. How do excitatory neurotransmitters differ from inhibitory neurotransmitters? Neurotransmitters are classified as excitatory or inhibitory. According to their effects on postsynaptic membranes. A neurotransmitter is called excitatory if activation of the receptor causes depolarization of the membrane and promotes action potential generation. A neurotransmitter is called inhibitory if the activation of the receptor causes hyperpolarization and depresses action potential generation. How many muscles are involved in the movement of each eyeball? Six skeletal muscles called the extrinsic eye muscles move the eyeball. They include the superior, inferior, medial, and lateral rectus muscles as well as the superior and inferior oblique muscles. Approximately 80% of the muscle what is muscle fatigue? Muscle fatigue results from strenuously exercising a muscle for a prolonged period of time. The muscle may lose its ability to contract due to interruption in the muscle's blood supply, and therefore an interruption in the oxygen supply, or the lack of acetylcholine in motor neuron axons. 
however, muscle fatigue is most commonly associated with the accumulation of lactic acid in the muscle as a result of anaerobic respiration. During vigorous exercise, the circulatory system cannot supply oxygen to muscle fibers quickly enough. In the absence of oxygen, the muscle cells begin to produce lactic acid, which accumulates in the muscle. The lactic acid buildup lowers pH, and as a result muscle fibers no longer respond to stimulation. How is shivering related to the muscular system? Shivering is the body's natural way of keeping warm and can actually serve as a lifesaver in extreme cold. Shivering produces heat by forcing skeletal muscles to contract and relax rapidly. Heat is produced as a byproduct when muscles metabolize ATP, adenosine triphosphate, for contractions. What are the causes of epilepsy? Epilepsy may develop because of an abnormality in brain wiring. An imbalance of neurotransmitters, or some combination of these factors. Researchers believe that some people with epilepsy have an abnormally high level of excitatory neurotransmitters that increase neuronal activity while others have an abnormally low level of inhibitory neurotransmitters that decrease neuronal activity in the brain either situation can result in too much neuronal activity and cause epilepsy What are the causes of epilepsy? Epilepsy may develop because of an abnormality in brain wiring. An imbalance of neurotransmitters, or some combination of these factors. Researchers believe that some people with epilepsy have an abnormally high level of excitatory neurotransmitters that increase neuronal activity while others have an abnormally low level of inhibitory neurotransmitters that decrease neuronal activity in the brain either situation can result in too much neuronal activity and cause epilepsy What are the different types of seizures? There are more than 30 types of seizures, which are categorized as either focal seizures or generalized seizures. Focal seizures, also called partial seizures, occur in just one part of the brain. They are frequently described by the area of the brain in which they originate, example. Focal frontal lobe seizures. Two examples of focal seizures are simple focal seizures and complex focal seizures. In simple focal seizures, the person will remain conscious but experience sudden and unusual feelings or sensations such as unexplainable feelings of joy, anger, sadness, or nausea. He or she also may hear, smell, taste, see, or feel things that are not real. In complex focal seizures, 
the person has a change in or loss of consciousness. People having a complex focal seizure may display strange. Repetitious behaviors such as blinks, twitches, mouth movements, or even walking in a circle. These repetitious movements are called automatisms. Some People with focal seizures may experience seeing auras. These seizures usually last just a few seconds. Generalized seizures are a result of abnormal neuronal activity on both sides of the brain. These seizures may cause loss of consciousness, falls, or massive muscle spasms. There are many kinds of generalized seizures. Two of the better known generalized seizures are absence seizures and tonic-clonic seizures. In absence seizures, formerly called petit mal seizures, the person may appear to be staring into space and slash or have jerking or twitching muscles. Tonic-clonic seizures, formerly called grand mal seizures, cause a mixture of symptoms. Including stiffening of the body and repeated jerks of the arms and slash or legs, as well as loss of consciousness. What are the different types of seizures? There are more than 30 types of seizures, which are categorized as either focal seizures or generalized seizures. Focal seizures, also called partial seizures, occur in just one part of the brain. They are frequently described by the area of the brain in which they originate, example. Focal frontal lobe seizures. Two examples of focal seizures are simple focal seizures and complex focal seizures. In simple focal seizures, the person will remain conscious but experience sudden and unusual feelings or sensations. Such as unexplainable feelings of joy, anger, sadness, or nausea. He or she also may hear, smell, taste, see or feel things that are not real. In complex focal seizures, the person has a change in or loss of consciousness. People having a complex focal seizure may display strange. Repetitious behaviors such as blinks, twitches, mouth movements, or even walking in a circle. These repetitious movements are called automatisms. Some people with focal seizures may experience seeing auras. These seizures usually last just a few seconds. Generalized seizures are a result of abnormal neuronal activity on both sides of the brain. These seizures may cause loss of consciousness, falls or massive muscle spasms. There are many kinds of generalized seizures. Two of the better known generalized seizures are absence seizures and tonic-clonic seizures. In absence seizures, formerly called petit mal seizures, the person may appear to be staring into space and slash or have jerking or twitching muscles. Tonic-clonic seizures, formerly called grand mal seizures, cause a mixture of symptoms. Including stiffening of the body and repeated jerks of the arms and slash or legs, as well as loss of consciousness. Which neurotransmitter is depleted in Parkinson's disease?
Parkinson's disease results from a deficiency of the neurotransmitter. Dopamine in certain brain neurons that regulate motor activity. Parkinson's disease is characterized by stiff posture, tremors, slowness of movement. Postural instability, and reduced spontaneity of facial expressions. There is no cure for Parkinson's disease. But certain medications provide relief from the symptoms by increasing the amount of dopamine in the brain. Patients are usually given levodopa combined with carbidopa. Carbidopa delays the conversion of levodopa into dopamine until it reaches the brain. Nerve cells can use levodopa to make dopamine and replenish the brain's dwindling supply. Which neurotransmitter is depleted in Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease results from a deficiency of the neurotransmitter. Dopamine in certain brain neurons that regulate motor activity. Parkinson's disease is characterized by stiff posture tremors, slowness of movement, postural instability, and reduced spontaneity of facial expressions. There is no cure for Parkinson's disease. But certain medications provide relief from the symptoms by increasing the amount of dopamine in the brain. Patients are usually given levodopa combined with carbidopa. Carbidopa delays the conversion of levodopa into dopamine until it reaches the brain. Nerve cells can use levodopa to make dopamine and replenish the brain's dwindling supply. When was Parkinson's disease first described? Parkinson's disease was first formally described by D.R. James Parkinson, 1755 to 1824, a London physician, in an essay on the shaking palsy, published in 1817. When was Parkinson's disease first described? Parkinson's disease was first formally described by D.R. James Parkinson, 1755-1824, a London physician, in an essay on the shaking palsy, published in 1817. What are the characteristics of the central nervous system? The central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, is protected by a bony covering. The skull surrounds the brain and the vertebral column protects the spinal cord. What are the characteristics of the central nervous system? The central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, is protected by a bony covering. The skull surrounds the brain and the vertebral column protects the spinal cord.
which membranes cover and protect the brain and spinal cord. The meninges, from the Greek meanings, meaning membrane, cover and protect the brain and spinal cord. The meninges have three layers, one, the dura mater, two, the arachnoid, and three, the pia mater. The dura mater is the outermost layer covering the central nervous system. The arachnoid, from the Greek arachne. Meaning spider, is a web-like network of collagen and elastic fibers. The innermost layer of the meninges is the pia mater. The pia mater is firmly attached to the neural tissue of the spinal cord and brain. Cerebrospinal fluid fills the space between the pia mater and the arachnoid membrane. Most of the blood vessels that supply blood to the central nervous system are in the pia mater. Which membranes cover and protect the brain and spinal cord? The meninges, from the Greek meanings, meaning membrane, cover and protect the brain and spinal cord. The meninges have three layers, one, the dura mater, two, the arachnoid, and three, the pia mater. The dura mater is the outermost layer covering the central nervous system. The arachnoid, from the Greek arachne. Meaning spider, is a web-like network of collagen and elastic fibers. The innermost layer of the meninges is the pia mater. The pia mater is firmly attached to the neural tissue of the spinal cord and brain. Cerebrospinal fluid fills the space between the pia mater and the arachnoid membrane. Most of the blood vessels that supply blood to the central nervous system are in the pia mater. <laughs>